Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Jesus presents a revision of the previous day, filmed on the 13th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Yeah, see how we go. Today we're going to try and stay on uh, time because it's uh, otherwise we get really behind with all of our copying. I just finished my copying about five minutes ago from last, from yesterday, so um, we need a bit more time to do whatever copying of our data. Okay. Now, what I thought we'd do today is start with a very quick revision of yesterday. Does that sound alright? in terms of all of the main points from yesterday. So the first talk that was given yesterday was to... That one's not very good, so I just... That one's already worn out. And if we could have another blue one, that'd be great. Listen, maybe. Thanks. All right. So the first, the first talk uh, was given by myself, remember? Desire for personal change. The purpose of that talk was to help you measure or assess yourself. You remember that? In terms of where you're at right now. So, so there were three primary things that we could measure ourselves that are fairly consistent, that, that are not subjective in nature. In other words, they're not based on your own personal opinion. It either happens or it doesn't happen. Do you remember what those three things were? Time. time. So first one was look at the way you spend your time. The second one was? Will, so the way you, what, what you choose to do with your will. And the third one was truth. So what, are you living in truth or are you avoiding the truth in your day-to-day -day life? Right? And remember these are three things that uh, if, you, if you just look at your life very clinically, I suppose is the best way to do it, without judgement. Just look at it clinically and go, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no you can come up with a pretty good assessment of where you're at in terms of whether you really have a desire to change or not. Now, most of us at, at that point ended up with the, do end up with the idea or concept that actually my life up till now is probably demonstrating that I don't have a very strong desire to change. Now, that's me going in and out, isn't it? So, so we've got this, the, these ways of measuring that. So, so once we measure that and we realise, oh, maybe I don't have that a strong desire to change, actually, then, then we had Cornelius's talk with you, which, um, which focused on three main reasons why we don't have a desire for change or why we live in such fear of change. Can you remember those? So his talk was about fear of change. Can you remember... What were the three reasons? The first reason is no faith. So that's the first reason, no or lack of faith. And remember there was faith in a number of things, wasn't there? Faith in God, faith in yourself, faith in God's laws, faith that God created you to be able to handle everything. All of those kind of things are all a part of that faith that we need to develop. Then there was, can you remember the second? So it's about coping emotionally or and or to be more specific coping with emotional overwhelm overwhelm yeah now i suppose coping and overwhelm are probably not <laughs> synonymous are they <laughs> Right? But, but from a fear-based perspective, we need to be able to let ourselves be overwhelmed. And the, most of us don't let ourselves do that. We want to manage the emotional experience. And that's a big problem. And, that, and that's one of your major fears. Remember, Corny at the beginning said, oh, what are all your reasons why you're afraid? And you listed all the reasons. He said, yeah, none of those are the reasons, actually. Yeah, okay, what are the reasons then? And it really does boil down to just three reasons. There's only three reasons, really. And there's, the first one is we've got no faith. The second one is we don't, we, we're, we're worried whenever we have an emotion. 
right? That's a, that's a big one. And then the third one was resistance to truth, right? In other words, we're constantly saying no to the law of attraction. No, I don't want to hear about that. Don't want to hear any truth from anybody. You want to maintain your own facade. And so you're always resisting truth. Now, in some of the uh, sessions that we do, the personal truth sessions, I'll go through some of these principles with you to show you where you've been neglecting these particular areas in your own questions. So when we do some questions today, for example, um, who's down today? I think it's Joy and Nina in one group. We haven't talked to Nina yet, have we? No, you're in one group with Joy because you both asked exactly the same question. And, and then the second one was Barb today, wasn't it? So, so one of the things I'm going to go through with you today, what, what's been happening in your own life in this area to, to, to not, so that you keep on asking very similar questions, actually. So we'll, we'll talk about that. And then Mary came up yesterday. Let's just rub those out. Mary came up yesterday. And the subject, what was the subject of her talk? Strengthening your will to love. Now remember she focused, so if I just write that up on the board, so it's strengthening the will to love. Right. And she focused first on how love governs the universe, remember that? And, and this is something most of us still don't get, to be frank. We think we get it, but we don't really get it. You say it every time whenever we ask questions about it, but you don't really get it because if you really trusted that love governed the entire universe, you wouldn't be so worried about your day-to-day -day life and you wouldn't be so worried about God and how God is and you wouldn't be blaming God for anything that goes wrong. You would see it all as a loving expression of the universe to bring you into a place of love. So the reality is we can parrot off a whole heap of things, but in our soul we obviously think very differently. We feel very differently, in fact. So then she said, well, what is will then? And she discussed the comparison between will power and what is soul-based will. Right? And many of you had a struggle with the understanding of that. Your will is all of your current emotions all mixed up together, stored within your soul. Your willpower is when you try to overcome all of that. <laughs> right? And we're not talking about using willpower anymore. You don't want to power out of the expression of you. You need to get to the bottom of your will and why it's like it is and remove from it the causes. And Mary talked to you and said that actually what we're going through over the next four days will help you do that. Right? But then she brought up the, the, uh, the concept of a muscle, remember? Yep. Did that help you with sort of working out how am I going to do that? And remember she had four points or so with regard to the being like you have to have overwhelming stimuli. You know, that's how you get your muscles to grow. That's how you're going to get your soul to grow. You've got to do it every time over and over again. And then she talked about feeding yourself with the proper food from a spiritual perspective. Right? So what that means is that instead of feeding on all the crap that the world offers you, you're now choosing to be selective and what you're focusing on is learning about, like everything you select is to help you learn about love. And anything that's not helping you learn about love, you put on the secondary table of the other things you do when you aren't doing the most important thing, which is learning about love. Right? The other things you do when you've got a bit of time left over. And I suggest to you, for a little while, you're probably not going to have much time left over when it comes to learning about love because we've, there's so much to learn. Like myself and Mary have been doing it for 2,000 years, we've still got so much to learn about love. So, but if you get onto that track of learning about love, you will find that the learning about everything else becomes simplified. Right? 
Because everything in the universe is governed by love. That means if you learn about love, you now know how you, when you're presented with other things, science, mathematics and other things like that, that are, more com that, that are intellectually complicated in nature, because you have a feel for love, you can absorb a lot of this information that you couldn't absorb before. So you actually also have a tendency then to learn everything else as a subsequent result of having learned about love. Right? And then she talked about the comparison, if you like, between what you drink, of, of what you drink. Do you drink rubbish gear, like, you know, sugary, sugary liquids, which is the, and she likened that to the lies of the, of the world. Do you keep drinking in the lies? Or are you drinking in the truth, God's truth? What, what do you drink? And for most of us, we still drink in all the lies, you know? In fact, the amount of times I hear a person say, when I'm talking to them personally, I hear them say something like, oh yeah, but that's not the way the world sees it, or that's not the way my parents see it. I, and I say, I don't give a stuff it's the way your parents see it, to be frank. I care about what is the truth, and this is the truth. That's all you have to worry about. You don't have to worry about what anybody else thinks of it. The most important being in the universe, God, thinks good of truth. So why worry about what anybody else thinks about it? That's just an addiction of some kind. So Mary went through quite a lot of things there in terms of that will help you develop your will to love. But she mentioned during the talk, didn't she, that uh, we would start over these three days now going through some other information with you which will help you look at how you can start to grow your will to love. And today, we're going to un uh, focus on one of, the, one of the important parts of developing yourself, and that is understanding yourself.